everyone, and welcome to this month's installment of your Daily Five. I am Mish Schneider, uh, always very grateful for Stock Charts giving me this platform to come to you today. And it's a very interesting time in the market because we are hanging on for dear life with the lows, lots of buzz about the Fed. Earnings season is upon us. We had retail sales a little bit better than expected, consumer sentiment expecting inflation to peak, and calls for everything under the sun, from inflation to stagflation to deflation to recession to some form of economic growth. So it would be really great to be with you today to sort of quiet the noise, give you five stock picks uh, that I'm looking at, and also... The, considering that we just did this week a segment on calendar ranges, on the six-month calendar ranges, I think it'll be really, really good for you to review that segment because these five stocks that we're watching right now will not only be necessarily part of a report that we're putting out, I'm saying necessarily, not necessarily, but also it really will set up for you with all of the chop, what actually starts to trend one way or another. The six month calendar range that I spent time doing really explains how you get a reset or a rebalancing of a portfolio at the July mark. Okay, so here is the symbols I'm gonna cover with you today, Ford, Beyond, Levi, Space, and one ETF, Country Fund, South Korea. We do have skin in a couple of these things, and I'll tell you about that as we go. And I'm going to add one other symbol there, because I think if you really had to narrow things down to one macro indicator, it would probably be high yield bonds. So they're high yield, high debt, junk bonds. We'll look at uh, HYG for that, but that's not listed here. Okay, let's go to the charts. Okay, let's start with Ford. I like Ford Motor Company for a few reasons. From a fundamental standpoint, what's interesting is that from a valuation, it's actually very fairly valued, something we can't say about too many instruments at this point. And as we see as we've gone into earnings season, that a lot of companies, especially the bank companies, are saying no more corporate buybacks. Now, I'm not sure Ford did that necessarily, but it definitely does give you an idea about valuation and how it's been skewed through the years with low interest rates, uh, a dollar that hasn't flown the way it has recently, and of course, corporate buybacks. Now, Ford also, of course, has an exposure to the EV space. And what's so amazing is that with the announcement today that the government mansion is dictating, in essence, that's what it felt like, that we would have no money spent towards anything with to do with solar energy. Of course, EV cars would be a part of that. And yet some of the EV companies are tanking as a result, but not Ford and not General Motors, by the way. So I thought it would be a good one to look at. We do not have skin in the game yet, but this is a really good one to look at for the six month calendar ranges as well. So I'm not going to repeat the rules of the calendar range, but essentially what you want to do is you want to break the high of the beginning of the range in July, which is 1178. And you want to hold the low of the range in July, which would be right here at 1061. So that's kind of the area we're looking at. Also, we can see that even though we did not clear anywhere near the 50-day moving average, we have popped over this Bollinger Band, which is interesting. It is just now starting to go on par in terms of the triple play leadership indicator in your plug-in with the SPY. And then on real motion, we're not over the 50-day moving average, so we're not seeing any divergence, but at the same time, the momentum is holding steady. So we're looking to be a buyer of Ford, maybe over 1183, uh, risk maybe just down below uh, 1090 or so. We won't go all the way to the lows because it does report July 27th. We're thinking if we risk a dollar, we might be able to get a couple of dollars move. Um, maybe even if we really got lucky, if things went well, up to about $14 before we would start taking a profit. Now, the next one, you guys have heard me talk about this over and over again. This is Beyond Meat, and it gets a lot of negative press. But the truth of the matter is Beyond Meat, in terms of the July ranges, if we go here, you've got a high here of 3309 
And if we go into the low of July, it was actually made right on July 1st at 23.75, interestingly enough. So right now we're trading a good $7 off the low. Now we are long this at 26. So we do have skin in the game. We've taken some profit, but we're gonna use that July calendar range most likely to add. So if it had to take out 3309, clearly we're not gonna risk all the way down to the low. We'll probably use the 50 day moving average right here at 2720. You can see that it's doing really, really well in terms of leadership. And we're just clearing now for the first time in momentum, if we go way back here and we scrunch up this chart, the last time Beyond Meat was above and really almost barely above, even tried to be above that 200 day moving average in the real motion indicator was back in June of 2021. And every time it's reached above it, of course, it has peaked out at that point, but we feel maybe this time is different. So really this is very high on our list for recommendation. And as I mentioned, we have skin in the game. Another one that I've talked before about is Levi Strauss. Now this already, by the way, Beyond Meat, just so you know, I think reports August 4th or something like that. Um, so the other thing is uh, Levi. So now Levi already reported. So we have that out of the way graze the 50 day moving average. But again, if we're gonna look at the July calendar range, we have a low here in July at 1562. And we have a high that was made at this day at 1750. So we're literally trading within a dollar range of the July calendar range. And we're scraping the 50. So that makes this pretty darn clear that we wanna see two price movements and closes above the 50 day moving average and to take out this 1750. If Levi can take out that 1750 for a couple of days, or at least the 50 over a couple of days, which is coming in more at 1730, then I would say that's probably a good buy to risk about a dollar. And we'll be looking for a move maybe up to 19950. Of course, a lot of this has to do with the overall market, but you can see momentum is good and it's still showing leadership against the SPY. The next one, is space. And there's been all kinds of buzz about this particular company. This is Virgin uh, down at the Virgin Spaceport in Virgin Galactic Spaceport here in New Mexico, showing leadership, go, showing good momentum, has cleared the 50 day moving average. But this is a classic case where, again, we want to see the July calendar range. So the low of the July calendar range is 584. The high so far has been 744. So again, this is a good one to look at next week if the market holds up. This takes out 744. I think this would be a unique opportunity. And then you can have a couple of choices of risk. You can risk to the day it took out the 50-day moving average under 652, or you can go lower and you can use the low of the July calendar range. The next one here is actually an ETF. And this one is a very radical call. We do have skin in this game too, by the way. This is South Korea. We were very, very long in China for quite some time. And then we are out of China now and we switched over to South Korea. Not only does it have somewhat of a exposure to cryptocurrency, but South Korea's economy is doing very, very well. And you have a very clean type of pattern here. Now, actually, this is now the July calendar range low at 55.02. And the July calendar range high, let's just make sure I come in here, comes in right here at 58.47. So you can do a couple of things. You can wait for the July calendar range to be taken out. You can buy it against the low here. Um, and also you can wait for it to clear the Bollinger Band. Clearly no leadership at all, but that's okay. And momentum is looking pretty good. So this is my last recommendation in terms of a pick. Now, I just want to look before we leave at junk bonds, because I think this is such a key to the whole picture of everything that happens with the macro, in spite of all the noise that you're hearing from all different talking heads, this is telling its own story. When bond traders go in and buy high yield, high debt bonds, it means that they think that the economy isn't going to do nearly as bad as people think. And so right now, again, we actually are through 
Well, no, today we're actually making a July calendar range as I'm talking to you at 7520. So that's something that we want to keep an eye on for next week. And the low of July looks like it's right here at 7303. So you've had a couple of buck range here. We are showed leadership, it's coming off a little bit and look at the divergence in momentum. So really what I would do is not necessarily trade this, but I would say if we continue to hold in this whole group of consolidation and we don't break down under say 7350, it's telling you that the market definitely wants to have a rally. Now, remember we're in a range bound rally, so I wouldn't expect anything great in terms of new highs or anything like that, but it certainly means that we may be setting up for a tradable bottom in the market and it might be able to have some opportunities, particularly in the stocks I just gave you. So that's it for now. Hope you have a wonderful day, a great weekend. Thank you so much, Stock Charts TV, and thank you all. Bye for now. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.